we'll get into that later. <laughs> or not. Let's not discuss politics while we're trying to make entertainment. <laughs> Yes. Exactly. Just politics was trying to have fun. <laughs> you know, I'm actually trying to get away from that because it's just depressing. <laughs> okay, here's what I have to say about politics. That you know, the Nazis had special badges that they made the Jews wear. In a database. IBM. IBM. Believe it or not, IBM has that database somewhere in their archives. Wow. I wonder if you can still find it. This is the darkest intro ever. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. Have you ready? All right. Um, once again, welcome back, and we're going to discuss. Uh, if you if you watch my other uh, episode, uh, the other socio, which you totally should, because it's awesome. Um, you recently we recently uh, released information about the uh, the chain link fence incident. I don't remember this one too accurately because it was uh, years ago. It was years ago. Anyway, so here's the full story, or what is can be remembered of the full story. Um, there, once again, it was it was it was Vampire the Masquerade, and they were once again going after the secret underground order. Uh, it was it was called the Seraphim because, believe it or not, the guy that likes to play Vampire the Masquerade also happened to be a very big fan of the Legacy of Kane series. Go figure. Are we seeing a pattern here? They had to go to uh, a yacht club, and they were trying to find something at this yacht club. I, I remember it well because if you've ever seen the uh, the, the 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 anime uh, Gunsmith Cats, there 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 was a scene at, at a yacht club that that I tried to model it after that. I remember there being like six guards that that, that ambushed them, and and. The strong guy was, was 3Q, he was, I can't remember if he was trying to get over the fence, or just if he was just trying to remove the fence. He was doing something with the fence, and I'm like, well, I planned this ambush ahead of time, so I just, you know, set the ambush right there. They, they, they ambush him. Hey, there's guys with guards, there's bright lights. Ha ha! You know, you know, there's there's there there's no cool scene with a you know grenade attached to a rubber band in one person's mouth, but you know we got a chain link fence, so we're getting there, I guess. So he's got this chain link fence, and and he like rips it out of the ground because I, I I guess he's gonna I think he wants to use it as a weapon. I was thinking this chain link fence would work great. It's a big heavy object. If I can get it out of there, I can whip them, and then that's gonna be taken out the entire thing. Remember, my first weapon was the turret section. Of a tank, and it's, it's you know it's all he's got. So he's got this section of chain link fence, and all six guards attack, and, and and they attack, and they attack, and they attack, and for the life of me, none of them can hit him. They, like, like, like this, this, this. I realize he's got a fence there, but it's a chain link fence, so I rule that it's it's offering him no protection whatsoever. He's actually out in the open, and I think he was actually at a disadvantage there. I think he was actually at less protection. They could not hit him. My god, was I surprised. I was sure I was dead as soon as he said, and all six of them start firing at you. And I wasn't. I wasn't even close. He, like, finishes, like, just fin easily finishes them off. And then I believe, like, more guys came up later. And I think he might have thrown the chain link fence at him. Or he might have just thrown it away. What? <laughs> you ever start to get cocky when you didn't die when you should have? Immediately the guards hit him. And and we were kind of joking out about it before, but he took it to heart and picked the chain link fence back up and nobody could hit him again. And I believe I had offhandedly make made the joke about chain link fence armor, which once again it it wasn't a joke to him. It it's all in the dice. What what can I say? And and that sounds crazy. He made it and, yeah, he made the armor and for the rest of the time he was wearing that armor. Wearing that armor, wielding the light pole. God, the light pole. Oh my God, the light pole, yes! I remember the, the one in the park was the perfect length and then eventually we started finding street lamps and I was like, sure, I'll use the street lamp. The only time that really worked out was when I used it to bat an RPG. That's why he was ripping the fence out because he wanted to try 
different random objects as weapons. Because before, he was in the park, and he ripped a lamppost out of the ground and started swinging around as a club. That's, that's... And then it finally broke. <laughs> and then it finally, yes, it had finally broke on him, and that's why he used the chain link fence as a weapon. Now I read that is... Oh my god! Homebrew all the way, 3Q was. Yeah! Kind of a homebrew before homebrew was a thing. <laughs> that's, 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 that's entirely not true. There was probably so much homebrew going on back then, but... Wait, I homebrewed it! I homebrewed the crap out of that guy! That's... That's probably why it was so terrible. <laughs> oh. Yeah, and, uh... That's the story of the chain link fence armor. If there's a moral to be he had here, I, I completely forgot it. I don't know. You figure it out. Join us next time and we'll elaborate on pants. Episode here. Okay. You never set down the glasses, so there's no place to cut. It's a problem.